With WWE being criticized for having Steve Austin headline night one of Mania, this is Wrestling Hub, my name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report for March 23rd. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official, and also follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Withers set to face Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's title at WrestleMania, Ronda Rousey noted on a Facebook stream that she is hurt heading into the event. Oh, I'm totally fantastic. Fine. Tore my labial frenulum apparently, which is that little piece of skin that connects your lip to your jaw or whatever, my top jaw. I'm like so sick and not feeling good right now. Sorry guys if I sound like crap. I've literally sounded like this all day. Rousey would also note that she is excited to see Cody Rhodes in WWE. Or the possibility of Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes. I'm excited about the possibility. I never got to see Cody wrestle live. He left right before I got there. Speaking of Cody making his WWE comeback, Ric Flair took to his podcast to give his take on this, saying Cody is a really good talker. I'd have him go out there to say what it takes from the heart, and he would be very well received. He's really pulled his dad's legacy. It's come full circle back with WWE. His dad was such a big star for so many years. I think if he walked out the door in Texas, of course his dad is from Austin, dressed up, which he's in the clothes, which you know, I'm a big fan of that. I'd make him the hottest heel in the country. Actually, I would listen to what the crowd said when he walked out of Mania. That would be my opinion. I would say walk out there, let it breathe, let the crowd chant what they think. As the Hardy Boys are now reunited in AEW, they are looking to prove that they are the best tag team. On the Extreme Life podcast, Jeff touched on Darby Allen, saying he's one of the fastest talents he's seen. We talked about skateboarding, motocross, he showed me the thing he did for the video with a car. We were talking about if a pro wrestler has ever backflipped a dirt bike, and maybe you could be the first one. I think I could do it if I came into a foam pit and had some training. We had a great conversation about extreme sports, and he is one of the fastest guys I've ever seen. The way he does that suicide dive, Matt's told me how it feels to take it. It's like a bullet coming at you. On the Wrestling with Freddie podcast, AEW star Eddie Kingston brought up his struggles with mental health and how his promos are therapeutic. Ever since I was born, I don't know, I've been talking sh my whole life, you know what I mean? And to be honest with you, people are like, oh, you're so great at promos. These are not promos to me. This is therapy to me. So, all the stuff I feel in my chest or in my stomach during the week where I can't let out. Like, I can work out, I can do Muay Thai. I can have my girlfriend choke me out in jiu-jitsu, which she always does. She's a black belt. I'm an eggshell colored white. I'd rather rather just throw punches, that's why I like Muay Thai, but the emotional stuff I can't let out until I get in that ring and have a microphone. So people are like, oh everything you say feels so real, because it is. My career before AEW was one step forward, four steps back. I would just shoot myself in the foot because of my temper and my other mental health issues. There was a period of time in 07 to 08 where I was on a roll. I was at all these big indies like Ring of Honor, PWG, I was wrestling every weekend, three times, four times a week. And then I would just get in my own head saying, I don't deserve this. I'm drinking and I'm sitting in the tombs in New York, in the drunk tank, missing flights. And then I'd just come back again and everyone would be like, we're so happy you're back on track. And then I'd go right off again. Either someone pisses me off in the locker room and I'm screaming and yelling or a promoter tells me to do something or a promoter doesn't pay me right and I'm going to cash box to take the money from them. Then you get a bad reputation. Also, my body, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was almost 300 pounds at one point because I just didn't work out. I was just fighting, so my career is just up and down and I'm my own worst enemy, you know what I mean? So that's been my career, even at AEW. There's moments, man, I tell people all the time, there's moments where old Eddie, 20-something, 30-something year old Eddie is whispering in my ear like, go ahead, man, do your thing. Blow it all away, blow it all up. The cat 
On the True Jordy show, The Undertaker recalled his run in WWE as the American Badass and explained why this change in character took place. So, The American Badass, several things were going on there. One, yeah, I got hurt. I injured my groin and right close to coming back from my groin injury, I tore a pec. So I was out of that whole year leading into The American Badass. But what was going on was the Attitude Era. You know, you've got Stone Cold who's cutting these incredible promos that people can really identify with, right? I mean, it's like real life with a little bit of gas behind it. You got The Rock cutting these unbelievable promos. All these promos are just, they are so good. I think I would have survived, but I wouldn't have thrived if I would not have taken a break and took. As good as the character is, you're kind of boxed in two with what you can do and what you can't do. You know, it's hard for The Undertaker to be in the ring while The Rock is talking about Poon Tang Pai. You know what I mean? And that had some type of retort that The Undertaker could give. So, one, it was a period for me to just take a deep breath and do something different for a minute. At WrestleMania 33, the Hardy Boys would make their shocking return to WWE and win the Raw Tag Team titles. Talk about this on the Wives of Wrestling podcast, Rebby Hardy revealed that Matt and Jeff accidentally stole the pyro mint for Kurt Angle. It was the big debut of Matt and Jeff, the big surprise at WrestleMania, so that is a big, huge day for the Hardys, otherwise known as Kurt Angle Day, because right, so apparently I didn't know this until after the fact. It was a beautiful moment, they're going down this beautiful long ramp, and all the fans are going crazy, and it's a great moment, right? And there's pyro, and there's fireworks in the sky, and Matt's going in slow motion like this. It's amazing, right? Beautiful moment. So, I don't know if it was like right after a couple of days or what. Giovanna said, hey, did you notice how you know at the end of Matt and Jeff's match there at WrestleMania that the fireworks were red, white, and blue? And I was like, no, I didn't. I was all preoccupied, right? I didn't know what was going on. And she goes, yeah, those were Kurt's fireworks. It was also said on the podcast that Randy Orton nearly passed out while making his Mania 33 entrance as Kim Orton revealed. I was just going to say something about Randy's entrance at that same WrestleMania. He was walking down the ramp and he got so fired up that he got lightheaded. Yeah, but he got so fired up and like held his breath and he was getting fired up and he stops and he puts his hands down and he's like discombobulated. Randy almost passed out. He walks so slow as it is that it took him like five minutes to get down there. On Talk is Jericho William Regal recalled the tragedy of New Japan star Masawa from 2009, where the star took a suplex which would lead to his death. In this vein, Regal said, this is gonna maybe ruffle a few feathers. When I saw that happen, I thought, this is gonna smarten up this industry, and still people are doing that stuff. I'm sorry to say that, there are other ways. You do not need to be getting dropped on your head. That's the one thing, more than anything with me. It's not what I can help you with. Just come up to me and ask me not what to do, and I'll save you 10 years of your career. That that's the greatest gift I can give you. I'll tell you what not to do. If you want to learn how to get over and put matches together, I'll send them to Jericho, Christian, and other people. Go talk to these fellows. I just do me. I just go out and react to things because of experience. I do me. If I'm on with somebody who knows how to put matches together, it works. Because I wouldn't call anything. I'm instinct and whatever. It sometimes clicked and sometimes didn't. While reports have previously stated that Pat McAfee would be facing off against WWE Chairman Vince McMahon at WrestleMania, the SmackDown commentator will be facing McMahon's protege, Austin Theory, at the event. Talking about this on his podcast, Ric Flair said he wants to see McMahon beat up McAfee. I can see Austin somehow getting Pat down and Vince coming out and beating the shit out of him. Then of course, Pat McAfee makes the big comeback and because of Theory, he is not able to get to Vince. Vince puts the boots to him, beats the hell out of him, stands back. McAfee makes the comeback on Theory and then they keep it going. Former WWE star David Otunga has apparently been having issues with his ex-fiancee Jennifer Hudson over visitation of his child. The 10-year engagement came to an end in November 2017, as it seems the engagement ring is now up for auction. Otunga is working with IDoNowIDon't.com to sell it, with a portion of proceeds said to be going to a father's rights organization. Hudson had worn the ring when receiving a Grammy in 2009 from Whitney Houston, as the ring is said to be GIA certified.
Stone Cold Steve Austin has answered the challenge of Kevin Owens as the two are set to go face to face at WrestleMania 38 for a KO show segment. This will headline night one of the event, with Bully Ray criticizing WWE for this move on Busted Open Radio. If you have to announce it as a match, you have to announce it, obviously, as his last time ever. I don't agree with it being the main event of night one. You seriously cannot put that match on last, in my eyes. This is a direct kick in the ass to the talent that is there now. Yes, it's an attraction. Yes, it's Steve Austin, but I think even Steve Austin would tell you no, I should not go on last. The women should go on last or any other main event. You know what? Forget about man or woman. Whatever main event that's been built that has earned the right to go on last, but not Steve and Kevin. Steve and Kevin belong in the middle of the show. It's going to be very hard to follow Steve and Kevin. During a comedy show at a rooftop bar in Hollywood last night, boxing legend Mike Tyson would be in attendance where a random man came up to him and his friends to talk to him. The man would then challenge Mike to a fight as Tyson sat there and let him speak. The man would then be told to leave by a friend of Tyson's, which led to him pulling out a gun and cocking it, threatening to shoot the host. Thankfully, the gun would not be fired and would be put away. He approached Mike again and asked him to not call the cops. After listening to the man, Tyson embraced him before he left. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.